Hi, in this tutorial we're going to look at how to implement user authentication for our PHP database. So we have the database all set up where we can add and edit and delete contacts and also to view them. And we've also set up a search. But we don't want anybody to be able to come in here and make changes. So we're going to update the program so that it will only allow people with the proper login name and password to be able to get in here to view the database and make changes. And in order to do this, we're going to use something called sessions. So let me introduce you to sessions. So user authentication, and we're just going to do a basic form of authentication that's going to check to make sure that the user has properly logged in with the username and password. This is not going to be a demonstration in how to let the user set up their own username and password account. So this is just with one login and one password. So first of all, you should be aware that there are some functions in PHP that can only be called if nothing has been sent to the browser. And these include the header function, set cookie function, and session start. And so in this, we're going to be using both the header and the session start functions. So you should be aware that in a regular PHP script, any HTML that's outside of a PHP tag is automatically sent to the browser. And so that will cause a problem with our header or set cookie or session start functions. So we're going to look at how to make accommodations for working with these and not sending any HTML to the browser ahead of time. So sessions, as I mentioned, is what we're going to be using to implement user authentication. And in these examples, the, the data is stored on the server, not with the web browser. So it's not going to be dependent on the user's browser, but we're going to store the information on our web server. And we can use that to locate the user's record in what's called session data. And it's more secure because it's saved on our server rather than on the user's computer. And we can store more information than we can with cookies. And it can also be used without cookies. Now each page in your website that, that is going to require user authentication is going to call the session start function. And the session start function is what creates the session ID. And if it's already been established, then it's going to access the session that has been started. Now this has to go into your page before anything else is sent to the web browser. So in our example, we are going to see session start in the code before anything else, even the opening HTML tag. So as I mentioned, the first time that uh, we use the session start, it sends a cookie with the name session ID and the cookie value, which is a combination of 32 hexadecimal letters. And then we can access those values through using the array for a session key and session name. But for our type of authentication, we really don't need to get to it for this example. The index.html page is where the user will start. And so we're going to have them enter a username and password, and then that information is going to be submitted to the auth PHP script. So let's look at the code, first of all, for the HTML page. So our index.html contains a form, and the action is set to auth PHP. So it's going to bundle up the names and values in the form and send it to auth PHP. So we have one text box for username, another text box for password. And then we're also passing in a hidden form field where we have login, and the value is login. So this will say login equals login. So the purpose of that is we go to the auth PHP file 
And the first thing it does is it's going to start a session and set a session cookie. And now it's going to check to see if the user is logged in. So the first thing we're doing is looking to see if login was passed in from the form. So that's where the hidden form field comes in. It's looking to see whether this value is being submitted to begin with. And if it is, then it's going to continue on with checking to see if username is posted and if it is, if it's equal to I'm a great student. And it's also looking to see if password was posted and if password is equal to test. So if all three of those things are true, we get login and the username matches and the password matches, then we're going to say session authenticated and set it equal to one, which is true. If it's not, then authenticated is going to be false. And then we send the user back to the index.html page. And then we write and close the session and send them to index.php, which is the screen where we have a listing of all of our contacts. And then we also have this little piece right here so that if the user is in the site and they decide they want to log out and they click the log out link, it's going to come here and destroy the session and then take the user back to the login page or the index page where they have to enter their username and password again. Now just as a reminder, remember that session start has to be the first thing in your program. We can't have it sending anything else to the browser before we call session start. So don't have any HTML tags up here or anything else before the opening PHP tag, right? This has to be the first thing, otherwise you'll get errors or it won't work properly. Next, we need a file that is going to check the authentication when the user gets to each page. So this is going to create a session and say whether the user is authenticated or not. And then all of the other pages in our site is going to check to see if they're authenticated. So I have another script here called admin login and it's pretty short. We are starting a session and again nothing else before your PHP tags or before the session start line. So if it's not authenticated or not equal to one, then we throw the user back to the index.html page where they have to log back in again, and then we exit out of the PHP script. And now we need to implement this on all of our other pages. So I'm going to start with the index.php file first, and let's just see if we can get it so that the index.php file won't let the user in unless they've been authenticated. So right after the opening PHP tag, I want to require the admin login.php file. So that's going to require this admin login. This is going to start a session and it's going to check to see if it's been authenticated. And if not, then it throws the user back to the login page. So I don't want my users to even get to this index.php page before they've logged in. So I'm going to save this and I'm going to upload all of these to the server and we'll test it out. Okay, so I've uploaded my updated files to the server and I'm on the index page. I'm just going to try to log in without a username and password and it's not letting me go in anywhere. So if I put in I'm a great student and not the entire password and I click login, it doesn't let me in. So I'm going to put in the correct password and log in and it takes me to the index.php page. Now once I'm in there, these other pages let me go to them regardless of the fact that I'm logged in or not but I'm going to log out. This log out is set to go to the auth PHP script and take me back out. So let's look at the, the header file where this log out is. 
Right, we've included this header file in, and this has our navigation links in here. And you can see the link for logout is linking to off PHP, and then we're passing it the value logout. So it's going to get logout. So off PHP, if it's using a get, which is what's going to happen with a link, if get is logout, then it destroys the session and takes the user back to the login page. So once you are logged in, we want to make sure that these other pages are set up to require us to be logged in. So then that way, if they log out or they happen to copy the URL for updating a contact, so let's say that they went to edit a contact here, they could copy this and paste it into their browser and bypass the login screen. So don't just use the getting to the main page as the only method of authentication because users will bookmark this and copy it and try to get back into the site that way. So we need to protect all of the PHP scripts that are in here that allow users access to the database. So that means that the way we set up index PHP here with require admin login, I'm going to copy that and all of the other pages in the site. Let me bring up that list. Okay, these are all the other pages that I've created in the site. So update form, update, search, really delete, the confirm delete, add by form, those all need to be updated so that the user won't be able to access them without being logged in. So for example, let's open up the update, the two update scripts. So if I select those and open them up in my editor, right here's the update form, and I'm going to require admin login, and then the update script, you also want to require admin login. Then I would update, upload those to the server, and then it would require me to be logged in in order to do any updates. So that is a basic way of doing user authentication. And in this example, we have just a single login name and password that's used. 